the next session of workshop will be jazz music melodic approaches to western music by oliver fox from germany i invite oliver fox on the stage thank you so much oliver he is supported by vishnu on the guitars today fox is a berlin based saxophonist with a deep global musical experience born in east berlin he completed his jazz studies in saxophone clarinet and flute in graz austria under zirp scholarship he then broadened his musical horizons researching carnatic music in india and then working as a performer and composer in shanghai china he travels extensively performing and conducting workshops throughout the world his tour in india this time is sponsored by berlin senate culture affairs department we are very grateful to them fox today he is going to give us a workshop on melodic approaches in western music and he is supported by vishnu on guitars over to fox mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, as India, I told you already. My name is Oliver Fox. I'm from Germany, Berlin, and um, I'm playing the soprano saxophone. This is a soprano saxophone. It's not a golden clarinet, or, um, and um, also the flute and the clarinet. But but today I just brought the flute, the key flute, and the soprano saxophone, and um, we. Um, open up with a little, a little cadenza, a little piece, a little improvisation on a few chords, very common chords in jazz music. And I want to talk about melodic approaches in jazz music or in Western music in general, because um, it all, um, it's all connected. It's all together, and. Um, most of the soul music, of the pop music and western music is all coming from that, like, theoretically and also, like, the basics in that will be in that, um, in, in jazz, pretty much. Same, like, uh, lots of film music will have their basics in Indian classical music and some western music, I guess. 
Yeah. Um, but first, uh, before I start, I want to thank say thank you. Um, first of uh, first to Ambalam um, to make this whole thing happening. That this was, uh, I think it's it's quite a great festival. Thanks, Ambalam, and also um, to the Senate of Berlin to support uh, myself to be able to be here and. Um, I'm enjoying very much my stay in India so far. As well, I want to thank you, uh, Vishnu, for supporting me here on this workshop now. So before I start, um, I think you guys all signed up for the workshop. I'm not sure where, on which kind of level and experience you are, but I just try to talk a little bit in a way that uh, for people like that you don't have any experience with the uh, like theory of western music so very basic and um, if you're already very advanced you're welcome afterwards to come to me and have any question like also we can do at the end but first of all I want to talk a little bit about the um, the harmonic system in 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 Western music in general, because I I found out in India there is a lot lot of confusion about these kind of things. Most of most people start to learn guitar or piano and just now a couple of chords, and they don't really know how this actually comes, where this actually comes from. So. Um, let me start with a basic model of the whole thing. It is, if you take, for example, the scale, just the, the, like a, the basic Western scale is like the major scale. Like uh, we also say, call it the Ionian mode, uh, which is, uh, which is just like. Uh, so, I don't know if that was on now, but uh, can, uh, can you can you keep this microphone always on? So, if I play something, I play it in this one. Yeah. So. <laughs> So that's a basic uh, Western scale, and um, on this scale, um, there are like many, like the basic chords are all based on this scale. So, how to create a chord now out of the scale? The point is, um, if you just uh, visualize this scale, like uh, on a um, on a hor horizontal line, like all these notes next to each other, and then you build up in another scale, like the same scale from each note um, you were playing um, in a vertical line. So, what I mean basically is, on the first step, you got you got that scale. Is it on now? So if I play the same scale from the second note, um, so from the re to the re, it will be. And from the ga to the ga. So, in a way, uh, the Western scale system works pretty much like that. You have this one scale, and then you create a lot of other scales on starting on different points. That's the basic different, the major difference to to the Indian music, since in Indian music you have a very fixed um, um, shruti, and it's kind of the sa, it's never changing and all that. So I can I can change. The same, I can change the the root note all the time. 
So I have, and, but I have the same notes in the, in the, in the scale. So for me, it's, it's kind of like seven different scales, but it uses the same notes. Um, so on the piano, it will be only the white, the white keys. So now the next step, um, I hope everyone could follow. If you have any questions, please say like, oh, I don't understand it. Um, so the next step is if I take out of every scale, I just cancel every second note out of it. So suddenly what will be there will be chords at the end. So if I have the first scale, which was the Ionian major scale, and I skip every second note, it's going to be That's so you can just imagine like the notes in between, I just kick them out. Um, and suddenly we've got a chord with four different notes. Um, the simplest, the most simple version is a chord with three notes, but I'm using four notes since it's, mm, um, it's a little bit more on the jazzy side, but you can also, we can also do the same thing with three notes and we'll just skip the last one, but uh, let's say, let's have it with the four notes now, for now. On the second, on the second uh, step of the scale, uh, uh, we, had, we had the scale starting from the re to the re, which is... Skipping here, every second note, the chord we will get is... So the first chord, again, we had was... The second chord... So, so, and on this, based on this model, I can create from one scale um, seven different chords. And these chords will be um, these ones. And then the last one again. I mean, it's like the, the first one. So the chords will all have different, um, uh, we say, genders. The gender is of a chord means uh, if we have a small ga or a big ga. So if it's a minor chord uh, or a major chord. And then if we look at it, we will see the first one is... <laughs> has a major, uh, major third, so it's a big ga. Um, that's a major chord. Second one is a minor chord. Third one, minor chord as well. Fourth one, major chord as well. And so on. I mean, I can definitely advise everyone at home um, to take a pen and a paper and write the whole system down, like that will be much easier to visualize the whole thing. You can even do it with the, if you use the, the Indian notation and you, s you write like Sari Gama Padanisa and then the vertical line as well and then you just crush out every second note. So suddenly we've got, um, we've got uh, seven chords which are in a we, we say diatonic system because it just uses only the notes of actually one scale. We're still having like uh, one scale, but uh, you know, our Shruti is very flexible. We can put it anywhere. So, yeah, I hope that was somehow understandable for you guys. And that's pretty much the basics of the of the harmonic system and you can everything else you can just always uh, generate out of these basics so another very important fact <coughs> is 
a, a very big role matters the falling fifth. I, I call it the falling fifth because um, it is like the fifth. So the the relationship between a za and a pa is uh, in all kind of music everywhere in the world is like very very important. So like here you got it in the shruti, you got the sa and the pa there, and in uh, Western music. It's very important because um, you got as a harmonic movement, um, a harmonic movement where the fifth is falling down, like the bass note is falling down a fifth. That's it. Is is the most most common and most uh, basic thing. So you c we can uh, probably I can probably demonstrate it. Uh, can you play just um, just the five one five one? Yeah, just now. And now one. Cool. Again five. So you have this uh, movement like. So it's like tension and relaxation, uh, relaxation. And in every uh, Western classical piece, you will have at the end like Bach, Beethoven, and all that. Uh, many times, like like these kind of like. <laughs> something like that. It's like always. Um, I, I I also heard like Elera uh, Ajar doing that a couple of times. Uh, so you're having these kind of. Um, that's like one of the most powerful harmonical movements. It's the bass note is dropping down a fifth. So we have it. Uh, if we're talking about C major, uh, if C major is our root chord. We're having it from G7 down to C major. The G from G to C, the bass note is dropping. So um, the falling fifth is is our. Um, very powerful movement. The next step would be, um, and the next idea is like, what if I have the G now, so the fifth, uh, and I want to have a harmonical movement of a falling fifth to the fifth. So that means basic mathematically, basically, you have to fall from the nine to the five to the one. So. 9 minus 5 is, no, minus 4. Actually, it doesn't work. Um, but I mean, like, uh, if, if I have the G, G, G7, and I want to fall down to the G7, a fifth, so I have to use a D. It's because from D to the G is, is a fifth. So I use another, it's the same interval, pretty much. So playing the bass notes will be from so these are like two fifths so from the D to the G to the C which is in our scale it's actually from Ri to Pa to Sa um, 